What up, world? It's it's movie talk, as you know. It's the first movie talk of 2014. If you didn't catch my movie talk for December of last year, I um I'm gonna do one a month, and for the most part, I'm gonna base them on requests if I get some. Um, this one, Martin Scorsese, the man, my favorite director, um, was a request. If I don't get any requests, man, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick a star slash and or director and and just base it on them. I talk about their, their their movies I've seen, what I think of the movies that they've made that I've seen, and move on, basically. I'm gonna throw this out to y'all, man. I've seen like half of Scorsese's filmography. Um and obviously there's another half I have not seen. And um, I mean, just let's get started, baby. Uh, Scorsese's oldest movie that I've seen is is Mean Streets. Um, I'll admit I haven't seen it in a long time. It uh, it stars Harvey Keitel. I'm pretty sure it was the first movie he did with Robert De Niro. And I just, and I just remember, I, me I remember liking that shit. I know in the future I should revisit movies before I do these videos. Uh, but fuck it, I didn't watch no, I didn't, I didn't brush up. So I'm 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 gonna go off memory, and I remember Mean Streets being dope as hell. And uh, after that, we going on the Raging Bull, shot in black and white, starring Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci. Uh, Robert De Niro plays real life boxer Jake LaMotta, and uh, and once again, man, just uh just a badass movie. And next is The Color of Money. It um I'm not sure if it's technically a sequel to The Hustler, but it it has the same character Paul Newman, Fast Eddie Felsen. Uh, it's it's basically it's about pool sharking. Um, I saw it for the first time recently. Matter of fact, like I already said, Paul Newman plays Fast Eddie Felsen, just basically a retired pool shark, and um, and now he uh he sells he sells he's a liquor salesman basically. But um, another pool shark, Tom Cruise, uh, plays Vincent, and um, Paul Newman takes Tom Cruise and he takes his girl, and. S trains him basically schools him so he can get into this tournament that's in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and along the way, uh, just the cockiness and the the know it all mentality of Tom Cruise's character leads to a rift in their relationship, and Paul Newman goes out on his own and gets the itch for playing pool himself again, and um, like it ends with like like Paul Newman and Tom Cruise end up playing against each other in the movie but they don't really show it and I would have liked to see seen both of them play each other for real um and then Scorsese himself does a little voiceover about nine ball at the beginning and I thought that was cool I love how Scorsese like sometimes like has cameos in his movies and the voiceovers like he re he's really into all his shit uh Paul Newman won best actor Oscar for this movie and like I wonder, cause it was when Tom Cruise, the '80s was like Tom Cruise took coming out party, and I wonder if Scorsese saw Tom Cruise in the '80s, like he saw De Niro in the '70s, like he saw DiCaprio, what 10, 12 years ago, and just wanted to like make movie after movie after movie with Tom Cruise, but I don't know, maybe Tom Cruise wasn't wasn't feeling it or some shit. Um, I mean, just dope ass performances, man. The Color of Money is worth checking out. And uh and next we got Goodfellas. Um man, there's there's two there's two Scorsese movies that are like my favorite movies that he's done and my favorite movies of all time basically. And like it's like 1A and 1B. Goodfellas can be 1B, the other one can be 1A, and and the other one can be 1B and Goodfellas can be 1A like it doesn't even matter. And, uh like Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Paul Sorvino, Lorraine Bracco, I hope that uh, Melfi from The Sopranos, man, I hope I pronounced her name right, um, man, just gangster shit, man, just, this movie is flawless in my opinion, uh, I remember I had the DVD of this shit, and you had to flip the DVD over because the movie was so long, and the first scene was when Henry Hill woke up, and, and woke up to a, a barrel, a gun barrel and his shit, and man, this, this movie is just classic, man, um, just I mean and real talk, like if you if you don't know the opening lines of this movie, I mean 
First off, you a bitch. Second off, I mean, you, you're not even a fan. And that's real. Um, I mean, I can't say enough about this movie, man. It was based off uh, the novel, I want to say, Wise Guys. By, by the real Henry Hill. The performances, man, just all the way around, man. Ray Liotta, Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci, I'm pretty sure, nominate, got nominated or won Best Supporting Actor. Um, like De Niro, De Niro, man. Like, De Niro and Scorsese, you know what I'm saying? Two peas in a pod. Them motherfuckers should have never stopped making movies together. Everybody says The Godfather. Everybody says Scarface, man. But this, Goodfellas, this is my favorite mob movie. A year later, they made, uh, they made Cape Fear. And um, I saw Cape Fear. I, I saw Cape Fear when I was young, man. I think I saw Cape Fear when I was really too young to understand like what was really going on. I know um, Nick Nolte is a lawyer. Robert De Niro is uh, what's his name, Max Cady. And um, I want to say I want to say Jessica Lange plays Nick Nolte's wife, and um, the chick from Natural Born Killers plays their daughter. Robert De Niro has a, has a, a grudge against Nick Nolte, and I mean I know he calls him counselor, and um, it's a it's a remake of of an older movie called Cape Fear. I, I haven't seen Cape Fear in so long that I really don't want to like say what I thought about the motherfucker because I don't want to say you know what I'm say I don't want to shit on it and I don't want to praise it because I just I don't remember. Next, I saw Casino, and. That's another one. Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, um, and Sharon Stone, James Woods. Um, fuck, man. Who else was in this movie? Kevin Pollack is in this movie. Um, the fucking... Like, the floor manager at De Niro's casino is, is, is Mr. Wilson from, like, the second Don Rickles. Don Rickles, while I'm talking about Dennis the Menace, man. Don Rickles is who I'm thinking about. Um, and it just basically shows, like, the 70s, how the mob infiltrated Las Vegas. And basically how Joe Pesci's character fucked up everything. Um, just, man, Casino Casino is so fucking dope, man. Just 1995 for Robert De Niro is dope as hell if you include Heat. Uh, but that, that's another video, and like I can't I can't say enough about the performances, man. Scorsese gets the best performances out of fucking every actor in his movies, man. Just, um, just De Niro is Sam Rothstein, um, Sharon Stone as his crazy ass wife, and how she was all about the jewels, how she was all about the money, and um, I ain't saying she no gold digger. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, James Woods is the dude, like, he, he was trying to fucking use Sharon Stone to get De Niro's money, and just just the time frame of this whole movie, how everything was cool. Just De Niro was fucking suited every fucking movie. Seen, he had a different dope-ass suit on, man, suit and tie. Um, and then Joe Pesci, man, Joe Pesci is perfect as a hot-headed character. I mean, fuck, man, Goodfellas, Casino, Home Alone, Lethal Weapon, he always... He always damn near about to blow a gasket, man. Yeah, c Casino, man. Casino is another classic, but it, it damn near gets overlooked because of how dope the rest of Scorsese's movies are. And, man, and next, next we move in all the way to 2002. And um, and that's where we talking about Gangs of New York, man. Just like 95 for De Niro, man. 02, 02 was just fucking immaculate for Leonardo DiCaprio, man. He did, he did Gangs of New York and Catch Me If You Can, and they both... Damn near came out within a week of each other, but uh, you got you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you got uh, you got Daniel Day Lewis, you got uh, you got Cameron Diaz, uh, Liam Neeson plays DiCaprio's dad, who's killed by Daniel Day Lewis, and all DiCaprio is trying to do is get close to Daniel Day Lewis so he so he can avenge his father's death. Man, um, John C. Riley is in this motherfucker. Like this, this is a dope ass cast too. Um, and it just it was the beginning of, of just something epic in between in between Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese. Cause just more dope ass performances, man. I mean this this is another one that's just stupid underrated, man. Gangs of New York damn near might be more underrated than Casino. And then uh 2004, The Aviator, Leonardo DiCaprio, he played Howard Hughes. The relationship Howard Hughes had with cinema, the relationship he had with, with avionics. Um, just cold blooded. It's just, it's just interesting, man. I just, I, 
I don't know why, but I remember the scene where he like shuts himself in a room and just lined up all across the walls like jars full of piss. Um, Kate Blanchett won, uh, I want to say, the Oscar for Best Actress for this movie. And just, it's, it's another good-ass movie. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, Martin Scorsese does not make bad movies. And the ones that I've seen, he definitely hasn't made no bad movies. So, 2006, and that's when The Departed came out. And that's my 1B. Like, Goodfellas can be 1A, The Departed 1B. The Departed can be 1A, Goodfellas 1B. Just my favorite Scorsese movies, my favorite movies of all time, to include The Dark Knight. All the all the motherfuckers that, that Scorsese's influenced, man. Christopher Nolan is definitely one of them directors that Scorsese influenced. But, man, um, The Departed. You had DiCaprio, Matt Damon, Jack Nicholson, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Alec Baldwin, um, Martin Sheen, Vera Far, Farmiga, Farmiga, um... And it's just, it's just, uh, what's his fucking name? The, the reveal at the end, when, when, when shit really hit the fan, he, uh, James Badge Dale, he's in this motherfucker, Anthony Anderson is in this motherfucker, and it's just like, it's, it's, it's cops, and it's crooks, and this is another movie, just like Goodfellas, it's, it's just got that dope ass, memorable ass speech at the very beginning, you, you can be, you can be crooks, you can be criminals, but when you're staring into a gun, what's the difference? And I know I didn't say that shit word for word, but I still know what I'm talking about. Um, and just the whole, the whole, I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. I love shit like that. You, you got the crooks. You got Jack Nicholson. And um, just who can he trust between Matt Damon, between DiCaprio, and then you got the cops, and who can they trust between Matt Damon and DiCaprio? And you, like, the viewer knows after a certain amount of time who is who. But it's just just the way that the movie unfolds, man, it's just fucking perfect. And I know it's a remake of, uh, of an Asian movie, Infernal Affairs. I don't care, though. The Departed is one of my favorite movies ever. Um, just, and once again, man, the performances, man. I don't, I'm not sure if, off top of my head, if any, if any acting Oscars were won for this, this is the movie that got, uh, got Scorsese his, his best picture award, um, and just so many movies before that should have won, man, I'm going about The Departed forever, and then they chill for a little bit, and then it was gonna come out October 2009, but Shutter Island came out February 2010, once again, Scorsese, DiCaprio, and and this movie is real trippy. I know uh, Mark Ruffalo is in it, Michelle Williams, Jackie or Haley are all in this motherfucker, and just DiCaprio's fucking with some demons in his head, and just when the reveal is pulled at the end, it's just like wow, what the fuck? And just it's 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 another crazy ass fucking movie. And it also in 2010 was uh was the the pilot, the series premiere of, uh, of Boardwalk Empire. Martin Scorsese executive produced that entire show, but he directed the pilot, the very first episode. It was it was just cold blooded, like more more involvement in Atlantic City about um um about about prohibition and uh and just and liquor and everything that goes on with that. I mean, the last season is going down this year. Maybe Scorsese will direct another episode. Who knows? Last year, in 2013, Martin Scorsese directed The Wolf of Wall Street. I got my request for this video, and it was before the movie came out. So I was like, cool. As long as I can see The Wolf of Wall Street, I'll do my Martin Scorsese movie talk video in January. And then it was another true story. Uh, Jordan Belfort, he wrote the book. And Scorsese adapted that shit. DiCaprio plays Jordan Belfort. Jonah Hill plays his partner, Donnie Azoff, I think his name was. And I don't know how much of this shit really happened. I don't know how much of this shit was embellished for Hollywood. But it's, it's long as fuck. And it's it's another great fucking movie, man. Like, I can't wait to I can't wait to buy this shit on Blu-ray. The performance, once again, man, the performances, man, like... That's why Leonardo DiCaprio is one of the best actors in Hollywood, man, because he dedicates to the, to these roles and shit. And um, 
just everything that went down in this movie was so fucking extreme and crazy. And just some of the shit you can't make up. That's why that's why I feel it was so crazy. And then just the 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 performance from Jonah Hill and uh when 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 they're on them uh them like twenty year old expired ludes, that shit was insane. Uh, Margot Robbie, I know fuck teenagers everywhere are, are jerking off to her images and shit. Um Kyle Chandler plays the cop that's investigating all the Wall Street corruption. And um just the the work Martin Scorsese is so seasoned in his craft and that he can still pull off a movie this dope. This shit deserves best picture. I know it's a lot of heat and the nominations just come out and it's a lot of stiff competition, but DiCaprio deserves that shit for best actor. Jonah Hill for Best Supporting Actor, Martin Scorsese for, for what he's nominated for, and the movie overall for Best Picture. It deserves all of that shit. So that's really it as far as the shit that I've seen that Martin Scorsese has done. I know y'all motherfuckers will notice I didn't say Taxi Driver. I know it's like a, a cinema sin to have not seen Taxi Driver. I really want to see Taxi Driver. I'll end up blind buying it eventually and just owning it and watching it here. Um, there was a Blu-ray release for uh, The King of Comedy, another movie with, uh, with Squ that Scorsese did with De Niro, and then it got canceled just out of the blue. So I was going to buy that shit too. I haven't seen that. I want to see I want to see Bringing Out the Dead that he did with Nicolas Cage, and then I own Hugo, and I've just, I've just never put it in and watched it. Um, what do y'all think about Martin Scorsese? Uh, where does he rank among your favorite directors? What are your top... Let's say five Scorsese movies. Um, mine, 1A, The Departed, because it's alphabetical, whatever, whatever. 1B, Goodfellas. And then I'll say three, The Wolf of Wall Street. Four, Casino. And, and I'll give five to either either Mean Streets or The Color of Money. Like It's, it's a toss-up. Uh, but as I see more of his filmography, my list could switch. Um... So, February movie talk. If y'all got suggestions, man, comment that shit. I check YouTube, but I would prefer if you put that shit on my Facebook movie page. Um, check out my other videos, man. Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit Review is up. I got raps all the time. Raps out my mind. Um, and um, I hope that y'all motherfuckers have read the under part of my bill because even if I'm not there, Indianapolis is where I do this shit for that's all I got, man. Like I said, hit me up with requests or I'm going to take it upon myself to do February on my own. Peace.